Chuck Grace, American Custom Gunmakers Guild, and I was coerced into doing this interview today uh, by our executive director and, and her husband. So we're in Westcliff, Colorado in my brand new shop, which is uh, a little congested because I've got some other projects going. So we're going to attempt to lay out a checkering pattern on this stock on a forearm. So the chronological order of things is I try to get the perim perimeter of the pattern marked out before I hook it up into the cradle. So as I was saying, I, I like about a seven inch long. We're going to use a point pattern here today. So I'm just roughing out with a, with a white pencil. And this, this is subject to change either longer or shorter depending on the pattern that I come up with. So we're looking for symmetry. You know, the points coming out the same on either side. And I try to go about a quarter of an inch past the junction of the barrel and the receiver, uh, as you can see. So, so I lay out the actual pattern on a piece of graph paper, um, which is already three and a half to one diamonds. So that's pretty easy. It's got a center line in it. So I'll, I'll cut a rough uh, piece of paper with the tapers on the side to match the forearm tapers and then we can lay out points at will on this graph paper so it's it looks like it's more complicated than it really is but uh, this is how I started out this is a depth scribe for the side lines <clears throat> and it is just a dental pick that's been bent over adjustable and a little piece of wood so instead of laying this out with a straight edge you know with a pencil and then following a, hopefully the straight line if my top line is straight which all stock makers try to have a straight top line on their stocks then this uh, depth gauge works pretty good so again I'll, I'll, I'll go a little bit shorter than the actual white line you know so I can adjust that later so if I don't screw this up that cuts a nice clean line on both sides so after this is done then I can set the whole thing up in the cradle and if your top line is straight this cannot be anything but straight This is a cup holder, I call it, that uh, universal uh, goes around all the butt stocks or butt areas to protect. Um, it, this is all cork lined, so it protects any stock finish. Um, this pad is sort of boogered up with finish. It hasn't been cleaned up, but that's why it's a little dirty looking. Um, and then a dowel that uh, you can't see but get get a close up to these this is this is a rare thing called a spotted owl they're in oregon you know you've probably heard that they're endangered species the spotted owl so but i've managed to procure a spotted owl here so it's uh i'll keep that for the rest of my life probably <laughs> all right so <clears throat> So we've already cut those side lines in. You know, if I had tried to do that after the stock was mounted, I couldn't use my little depth gauge because uh, this is all cluttered up with that dowel, spotted dowel. All right, my next step is drawing a center line on the bottom of the stock. In a typical bolt action, you can there's two or three, two or three reference points you can go on. For one thing, the forearm has to be symmetrical. In other words, um, the same amount of wood has to be removed on both sides for symmetry. And that's important on a point pattern checkering as well. But to get a center line, everything's going to go off 
of the center line on the bottom. So I'm using the hole for the sling swivel and I line up on the hole for the front guard screw. And then I've, I've got a white grease pencil and I'll take and draw a straight line. Okay, now I'll check it. Um, so I've got it sort of, and if it if it looks straight, it normally is, and if it's off, then I have to adjust it. This looks pretty good. So if I'm going to lay out the pattern with graph paper, um, it's three and a half to one. This has an automatic center line in it, so what I'm going to do is cut a rough piece of paper to fit the sides of the stock and also intersect on the center line that I just made. So, all right, so now I'm going to be cutting and chopping uh, this paper. Again, I, I leave everything a little bit large. Um, I'll come back and keep trimming it. Again, all forearms are usually have a taper of some sort, and this is what we're looking at now. I'll, I'll do this two or three times, put it back on the stock until I trim it down to exactly line to line. Because if, if you don't pay attention on symmetry here, why everything else is going to be not too good. All right, now it's fitting on the center line that's on the piece of paper, and here's uh, the little white line sticking out that I made. So we're getting close. So I'm just going to hand sketch some stuff here. Uh, I've got a center line. And I like the two main points on the bottom to be inverted. And then we'll throw some others in here. So there's the back end of the pattern. So I can take and lay that across my center line. What I'm going to do now is tape the pattern, freshly minted pattern for this stock onto onto the my guideline so it's it doesn't move around on me we're basically got the pattern on there uh, so what i'm going to do is take the white pencil and go in and draw all these lines in okay and i can tell you any stock maker will tell you and he's done it Anytime you put a white line on a stock, you think you're going to come back later and it'll be there, but from handling it for an hour or two, it, it gets rubbed off. So I've had to save. That's why, you know, you always save the pattern, and it's important to put the guy's name on it in case you got two or three others laying there. I may have to put this back on and retrace this white line. And as I said, these are just guidelines. Mm -hmm. 